Now the new tube and the tough man and a welcome back to more Football Manager 2014 episode 17 we're on now guys and uh, we're just about to go against St Blasey in a second we've got also in this episode Bodmin Town and Liskeard Athletic now I do hope that you enjoyed last episode last episode literally just gone up so I haven't seen any suggestions or anything like that from anybody any of you guys or any comments uh, so I can't comment on that just now um I've got I'm looking at a couple of people I'm looking at buying a couple of people yet another centre back because this one is is going to be um, hopefully to replace like William Gallas because he's getting older now and uh, is getting to a stage where somebody else is going to have to step in and do the job and this guy's not too bad he's got good concentration determination leadership which is exactly what we want across the back there tackling marking heading st uh, we've got good strength good jumping reach a really good centre back and if we uh, have a look at the key attributes we can see Central defender to defend is three and a half stars. It's not bad at all in comparison with uh, with William Gallas. Now we're also looking at another guy, Isaac Vassell. Now this guy can play pretty much everywhere, and this is awesome. This is brilliant. This is exactly what I wanted to do. Uh, exactly what I want. And a guy who has a first, which is always good. Um, now the good thing about this guy, because he can play everywhere, um, his best position is an inside forward. Uh, at least, no it's not, it's a wide target man, but we're not looking for a wide target man, we're looking for an inside forward. One and a half stars, not too bad. He is 21 years of age, and his report says that he's a good signing for most conference south, and has a, uh, uh, has a potential to become a good conference premier right winger in the future. So he'll do a job down here in these leagues. So we've got a, a game, if I go ahead and submit the team, you'll be able to see exactly what this team is. Uh, like for today's game. We've got Jack McGowan up front again. Uh, Ross Wilson and Jeff, of course, on the wings there. Brown and Reed back in the centre of defence. And it's, it's exactly the same team as last time, guys. So I'm hoping for yet another good result against St. Blasey this time, who are who won their last match, and they are uh, in second place in the league so far. But it's only one game. And here we are kicking off our first home game against St. Blasey. In the second minute, it's Jeff who capitalises from a Jack McGowan gaff. Really, well, it wasn't really a gaff. He, went, he, he did a really good job of beating the keeper to the ball there. And it hit the crossbar twice before falling to Jeff's feet. And then into the back of the net. It's 1-0 already, guys. It is 2-0 courtesy of Wilson coming in on the left-hand side there. Beardsley, great ball across. Just gone 10 minutes and we're already 2-0 up. Is this going to be another season where we're absolutely going to run away with it? We should do. Our team is absolutely fantastic at the moment. Beardsley, great ball across the box. Wilson unmarked into the back of the net. And it's 2-0. It's 3-0. Just 13 minutes gone. And Jeff smashes it into the back of the net for his second of the game. My goodness gracious me, we are owning this league at the moment. Brown, good ball to Reed. Reed with a fantastic pass here to Jack McGowan. Oh no, it wasn't. It was straight to Jeff. I thought McGowan had just touched it on a little bit there. But Reed with the assist. And it's 3-0, guys. Well, Jeff is once again on form as we hit half time, three 0 so far. Jack McGowan with an assist, Jeff with two goals, Ross Wilson with a goal, Dominic Reed with an assist, and Jason Beardsley with an assist as well. We're doing very, very well so far. Let's go to the overview and see exactly what we're doing. Um, ten shots, only three on target, and all three of them have ended up in the back of the net. We've got a home attendance of 91, which I don't suppose is bad. It's, you know, it's an improvement on last season, um, but nowhere near the amount of... Somebody said in a previous episode for me to go ahead and build a new stadium or, or buy a new stadium or whatever it is, but I just don't think that it's realistic to be able to do that at the moment. I want to be packing this stadium out before I even think about upgrading my stadium. I want to do it realistically in that sense. Um, there's no point building a massive stadium if we're only going to have 91 people all, uh, you know, kicking around in it. So I'm going to keep it as realistic as I can up to a point. So um, 10 shots, three on target so far, plenty of possession. All three of them have been, have resulted in goals. Um, a little bit, we should, I want a little bit more on target though. I'm only making the one change at the current time, guys. Jack McGowan is going to come off for Matteo Capitani. I'm going to keep doing this because I want Jack McGowan to, to start the games and I want to see if Matteo Capitani can come on and really wow me enough to warrant a first-team place. This is what I'm after from Matteo Capitani. It's going to take a lot, of, a lot of work to kick out Jack McGowan from this team, I'm telling you that much. 
It's 4-0 thanks to a goal from Anton Brown. Uh, the corner was whipped in by Jeff. Gallas could not see it into the back of the net. It got cleared as far as the edge of the area. And Brown was there to smash that past the, everybody that was there. A whole group of players um, it went straight the way through them. Beat the goalkeeper. There we go. Look, Sinclair passes it to Anton Brown. And then first time shot straight through everybody. The goalkeeper couldn't see a thing. And it's 4-0. Anton Brown, second of the game, makes it 5-0 in the 85th minute. It was Reed with a lovely free kick into the middle of the box. Brown chested it down, beat the keeper with the chest, and then slots it into an empty net. 5-0, guys. Wow. I think Ethan Hutchings here is already on a yellow card and is taken down Beardsley as he was uh, ra uh, rabbiting. Rabbiting down the right wing. And uh, Beersley with the resulting free kick. I mean, it's literally nearly time anyway, guys. So I'll let it run. Reed whips it in. Ah, oh, that's a pretty pants uh, free kick there. But still, I think that's going to be the end of it once this gets kicked off. There it is. The final whistle. It's a, it's 5-0, it's guys. That's madness. Absolute madness yet again. Brilliant, brilliant play from my guys. Brilliant performances across the board. And Jeff, again, for the second match running is player of the match what a, what a thing to do to switch him onto that right wing because at the moment he is totally being an absolute legend guys it's been an absolute legend a clean sheet to go along with that as well that will keep us top of the table with 12 goals scored in two games that is absolutely madness guys two uh, yeah we have two um against us there but uh afc came back after that 7-2 loss and actually won their next game 3-2 against chippenham park um, I'm hoping, guys, that we're just going to romp. We're just going to romp away with uh, with this league. I really hope that that is going to be the case. And then we're going to get promoted on to the next county league. And then it's going to go to the regional leagues, I think it is, and then so on and so forth. But uh, at the moment, guys, 5-0. That is absolutely fantastic. St. Blazy didn't even have a shot on target in this in this match. We are back with the game against Bodmin Town. We're away for this one. Now, guys, uh, Jack McGowan is again up front. Jeff is on the right. Wilson on the left, of course. It's a very, very similar team as what you've seen. It's In fact, it's exactly the same team as what you've seen. Um, it did, when I did the quick pick, it actually took Jack McGowan out of the team. <gasps> Shock horror. Put in Isaac Vassell on the left and then put Wilson up front, um, which is really, really strange. I would have never put Wilson as a Trecatista up front. So I don't know what he's playing at, but either which way, I've changed it back. Um, don't be surprised to see Isaac Vassell come on for Wilson and uh, Matteo Capitani come on for Jack McGowan. Maybe Papi Stite might have to come on for Brown because I know he uh, struggles a bit uh, for, for uh, condition as we're going along. So, okay, Bodmin Town versus Oxenup Recreation, guys. And here we are kicking off against Bodmin Town. Come on, Oxenup, make it another big win. It's 1-0 and just eight minutes gone. Jason Beardsley, after a corner that was whipped in by Jack McGowan, um, it gets cleared, it gets banged around a bit, and then eventually it drops to Reed. Good ball over towards Davis. Great header down. Brown, wonderful pass towards Beardley, Beardsley. And then uh, in the back of the net with a nice swivel and shot. Good stuff. There's the equaliser from Bodmin Town, Phil Palmer. Now, what's annoying about this, ge this goal, guys, is that Gallas actually uh, short-changed the pass. Look at that. And the guy wasn't even looking, in all fairness. He wasn't even looking. Gallas there, and then Palmer, and the goalkeeper just... I don't know why, but he's just not diving. He's not doing anything as this goal. He's just stood there, just waiting for it. And I see it, you know, all the time with that goalkeeper. So I've just got to uh, find out, you know, whether or not it's worth bringing Bradbury back. But uh, it just doesn't seem to dive, does McGallivray. It's half time, guys, and the current score is one all between myself and Bob Mintown. Let's just have a look at the overview and see what's happened. Uh, one shot. One shot on target, one goal for Bob Mintown. We've had five on target. Unfortunately, we've not managed to, uh, to convert any of the other four. Um, at the moment, Ross, well, I'm going to take Ross Wilson off and put Isaac Vassell on at half time. And William Gallas has had a foul in the penalty area, and it's now chance. For 2-1 for Bobman Town. They've only had two shots on target, if this is the case. And can the goalkeeper actually do some good for a change? Palmer? No, of course not. It is 2-1 now to Bodmin Town. I'm making an early substitution just to make a point to William Gallas that I'm not happy with his performance today. Daniele Galasso is going to come on for William Gallas, who has a 4.9 rating, is without a doubt the worst guy on the field at the moment. That's a shame, that. 
Jeff has equalised matters in the 80th minute. Ball in from Jack McGowan from the corner. I think it was Jack McGowan anyway. From the corner, it was. And um, do you know what? How many times does this happen? Oh no, it never actually did what I thought it was. And Jeff just put it across the line for two all. But how many times in Football Manager do I have to see the corner taker taking the corner and then it hitting the crossbar? I mean, how many times are they actually going to do that? So I'm just going to go on to Overload here. I want to I want to get straight in there. I want to start this stuff. Um, hit early crosses, I think. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Shoot on sight. Take more risks. Be more expressive. And go for it in the last two minutes. Not that it's going to make any difference whatsoever. I think it's just going to end there at two all. So we've rescued a point. Or at least I hope we've rescued a point. You never know. Martin Nick three here. Vassell's on the, on the left. Going off on one. What is he, what is he going to do? Little ball in towards Davis. Cuts it back to Brown. And Brown had a chance right at the end there to possibly uh, make that 3-2. But uh, it's full time. It's two all. It's not a bad result. I mean, no, actually, it's a terrible result. Because look at this. Three shots for Bobman Town, two goals. We've had six shots and only two goals. Uh, double the amount of shots we should have. Double the amount of goals, guys. We should be 3-2. It really should be. Um, either which way, more possession, um, but we rescued it. That, this is the point. We rescued that point. We did not suffer a defeat, which is what I wanted. Well, finally, I get the announcement that we do have some season tickets sold. 17 season tickets this season, guys. Th from 13 of last season, we are going up. We are becoming a more popular uh, club to go and watch, which is fantastic. And I'm not surprised we've scored in every single game for like 17 years or something like that. The old woman, she's been out there with the flyers again, giving them out, saying, hey, come over to Oxen up. Watch these geezers play, and, uh, yeah, you, well, if we win the league, then I'll streak, you know, this old woman, and everyone's turned up, you know, at least five more people, at least. Liskid Athletic versus Oxenup Recreation now, guys, and uh, William Gallas is back in the centre of defence. I'm going to see how he plays in this game first before I would drop him for a couple of matches, maybe. Uh, I don't want people to get complacent, and using the same players over and over and over again means that, you know, they are getting complacent. Uh, so, I don't want that to happen. Um, so, that in mind, I'm going to take Wilson off. I'm going to put on uh, Isaac from the start this time. And with that being said also, Matteo Capitani needs to be on there. But with that being said, hmm... I think I'll leave that as it is. I think I can leave that as it is. Shall I put... I'm going to put uh, Matteo Capitani on from the start. And we'll see where we go from there. And we're kicking off the game against Liskiad Athletic. We're in the light blue. They are in the dark blue. It's 1-0. And it's Isaac Vassell who gets the rebound from a Jeff shot. It wasn't a bad effort. Oh, I've gone down in FPS for some reason. I thought it was offside, but he wasn't. Jeff takes the shot and then it just drops to Vassell's feet. And it's 1-0. It's easy stuff. It's one all. <laughs> you know what, guys, right? He is going to get dropped. In the next game, that fucking goalkeeper is going to get dropped because every single shot that's been on target so far has ended up in the back of the net. He shouldn't be there. He shouldn't be there. And he is going to get dropped in the next game, that's for sure, guys. And again, guys, this time it's William Gallas who makes the mistake that's leading. Why does my FPS drop every time I press record? I've no idea. Uh, this time it's William Gallas again who makes the gaff um, there. Heads it across. Oh, no, it's not William Gallas, but he's out of position anyway. And then McGallivray, I don't know what he's doing. But again, next on target, and it's another goal. Well, guys, it's halftime, and it's 2-1, the current score. Two shots on target, two fucking goals for Liskeard Athletic once again. I'm getting annoyed. I really am getting annoyed with that. Um, I'm going to, you know what, McGillivray, get off. Clive Bradbury is going to go back on and do a decent job in there. Uh, Gargantine is not having a great game. In fact, my defence is not having a great game. And before the game, before the game, or leading up to this game and the last one, I worked on defensive positioning. And at the moment, the, all of that, that training, is for naught. It's 2-1 at half time. Can we turn it round? 62nd minute, guys. And Matteo Capitani is coming off for Jack McGowan. It's 2 all, Jack McGowan! Reed on this right-hand side whips a great ball in towards Jack McGowan. And we've managed to equalise against Liskeard Athletic. Also, to note, guys, Clive Bradbury, brilliant. You know, he's had two shots on target 
and he saved them both. That is what a goalkeeper should be. I'm sorry, but McGalli McGalli Gallifrey is, uh, is going to be uh, off for the next match. It's full time and it's yet again another two all draw. Better though in the second half than what we were in the first. Clive Bradbury coming off with a 7.1 rating after coming on at half time for the very, very disappointing McGallifrey. Um, now let's have a look at the analysis of that game. Five shots on target. Would you believe three more shots went on target and our guy Bradbury saved them all. Ten shots on target for us. We did well. I mean, we we tried, but we just could not. There was a few uh, highlights that was on there, guys, that we just couldn't get past the goalkeeper. And the goalkeeper pulled off some good, good saves uh, for the other uh, for the other team. So as you can see, key player there, Thompson, for the goal. See, it's, so, you know, we tried, but we failed uh, to get uh, a, a win from that. But the positive is that we didn't lose the game from being 2-1 down, we've managed to uh, pick our heads back up and run at it and go again. And uh, Reed getting the player of the match this time. So that those are the three games played at the beginning of the season, guys. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and play some off camera for the next episode. I'm not sure when, you know, uh, where in the season I'm going to be. Uh, so, so you know, I've got to excuse me if I get four or five games done off camera. That's all I can get done. If that's all I've got time for, guys, that's all I've got time for. But Encouraging signs, we just need to get more of these on target and need to convert these into goals, like what we did in the first game. If you like this episode, please do leave it a like, guys. It really helps me gauge just how well this series is going down, whether people are getting bored of it or not. And that's the, that's the key that I would like to know, guys. So if you're still enjoying it, just stick a like on the video, guys. It only takes a couple of seconds, and uh, it really does mean the world to me. So until next time, guys, I've been the Tough Man. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, stay safe.